Okay, good afternoon, traders. Thank you for joining us here for the next installment in the Admiral Markets webinar series, Trading Spotlight. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're here to talk about how to trade the FTSE. Uh, my name is Paul Wallace, and I'll be leading you through today's session. I appreciate, as always, we have a very wide range of experience in the room, so I appreciate for some people are complete beginners who will not even know what the FTSE is, whereas we'll have other people in the room who are experienced FTSE traders. If you'd be kind enough to sort of uh, drop a note in the chat box there just to let me know what your experience is, whether you're still new to trading or whether you have experience of trading the FTSE, that would be fantastic. We'd really appreciate it. It also helps me just be able to, to pitch the session at the right level so that everybody gets something of value to take it away. We appreciate here at Admiral Markets that it's been a rather uh, turbulent couple of months and we uh, hope you're all safe and well. And we really appreciate you coming to join us here today to afternoon for, uh, for our session. Uh, and we hope you'll be able to help you in your, uh, in your own journey towards trading mastery. And if you're watching this later on demand, then please stay with us till the uh, end as what we'll be doing is switching across to the uh, Admiral Markets MT4 platform to have a look at uh, live markets. And so if you like the session, give us a like, or if you've got questions or thoughts even for a future session then please do uh, drop a uh, note in the uh, in the chat box or on a question and we'll be uh, happy to get in touch with you so you know FTSE is a, a fascinating subject and that's what we're going to talk about today in terms of you know what is the FTSE what does a trader need to know about the FTSE how do we analyze the FTSE and how do we trade the FTSE 100 using MT4 and we'll have a little look at a live uh, uh, markets in terms of, you know, looking at the FTSE itself. So, as I say, stay with us till the uh, end of the session and then uh, we'll be able to uh, have a look at the FTSE on the live markets. So there's a couple of good end points there, okay? So some people like Robert said have never traded the uh, FTSE. Michael says, hi, Paul, I'm a, I'm a complete novice. Uh, Phillips says, a couple of years and still finding my feet, but improving. And that's, um, well, you know, Phillips, uh, that could be everybody. Everybody who trades markets, you know, they're still finding their feet and still actually just improving, you know, trade by trade, day by day. Day. So, as I said, if you had some experience of uh, of trading the FTSE or indices in particular, just uh, let us know in that chat box, and uh, you know, let us know what your uh, thoughts and experiences were. It all really helps, and we uh, we appreciate the interaction. So for those who don't know me, my name's uh, Paul. I've traded for many years, okay? Uh, uh, primarily, I trade FX indices and commodities. And for a longer term trends, I'm a, primarily a trend trader and more of a mean reversion and reversal trader for intraday trading. Uh, and uh, here, you know, at Admiral Markets, as you can see, you know, we uh, provide a uh, truly uh, global range of uh, interaction and financial instruments with offices in over 20 countries, uh, licensed and regulated across a range of regulatory environments with competitive spreads on popular products, uh, and also, you know, the ability to engage with markets using both MT4 and MT5. But as we say, we want to talk about how to trade the FTSE. So, you know, as I said, thanks for letting us know. I appreciate some people here, complete beginners. The FTSE 100 is one of the world's leading stock market indices. Uh, some traders focus on merely trading indices and engage with the FTSE 100 as part of that portfolio. And in this session, we'll discuss the FTSE 100 and how traders can engage with this index in their own trading endeavors. So as I said, it's one of the world's leading stock market indices, represents the, uh, the UK, although we will talk a little bit more about that as we uh, go into the, uh, into the sort of the meat of the session. Uh, and I appreciate there are some traders here today who just focus on trading indices, and I appreciate there'll be others who, like myself, who might trade a, a basket of instruments. Uh, you know, and there will be something in here for everybody, whether you're a dedicated indices trader or whether you're just uh, as someone who trades maybe particular patterns regardless of uh, what the particular instrument. But today we'll focus on focus on you know, how we can trade the FTSE itself. So for those of you who don't really understand, you know, don't really uh, know what the FTSE is, well, it's the Financial Times Stock Exchange 100 Index. It's a share index of the 100 biggest companies listed on the London Stock Exchange. You'll hear it often referred to as the FTSE 100 or, or just simply the FTSE. OK, it was created in 1984 with a base level of 1000 and is maintained by the FTSE Group, which is a subsidiary 
of the London Stock Exchange Group. So as I said, the FTSE is a reflection of the London Stock Exchange. It's linked to UK markets, but we will, as I said, we will look into that in a little bit more depth in a, uh, in a few moments' time. So what does a new trader need to know about the FTSE, well, there's lots. You know, there's, there's a it's a fascinating subject, and you could spend days and weeks sort of investigating not only the London Stock Exchange but the FTSE in particular. But generally, what we see is that the FTSE trades between 8 a.m. and 4:30 p.m. London time, uh, and that has an impact. Okay, so we you know uh, to the opening at 8 a.m. London 8 a.m. and also at the closing at London 4:30, um, they can be rather uh, rather volatile times. Okay, and we'll have a look at that as we uh, as we switch across to the charts at the end of the session. So stay with us. But what you'll also find is the FTSE 100 is the hundred largest companies, but there are actually other FTSE other FTSE indices. You have the FTSE 250 which, not unsurprisingly, is the 250 biggest stocks. The FTSE small caps, which is just for uh, very small um, uh, small stocks that have just come to market. And the FTSE 350, which is the biggest uh, 350 stocks in the listed in the UK. Uh, and then, not surprisingly, the FTSE all share, which is effectively all of those indices put together. And what you can see there is the FTSE is calculated using the total market capitalization of the constituent companies to produce the single figure you see quoted. And that's what we'll have a look at in a moment. But for, you know, as I said, people will look at the FTSE 250, people will look at the FTSE 350, and people will look at the FTSE 100. And we'll explain in a few slides why, you know, the differences between them and what you actually need to be aware of as a, uh, as a trader. So, you know, if we're looking about how to trade the FTSE, first we need to start to think about, well, you know, how do we analyze the FTSE? What is it that we need to, uh, to, to see? What is it we need to be aware of? Well, when it comes to trading shares and also when to trading indices, many traders will use fundamental analysis to analyze their markets. And that's, uh, that's very true with the, uh, the FTSE. You'll find that there will be many traders who will happily use just basically fundamental analysis to make their buy or sell decisions. What you will also find is that traders can also use technical analysis to help analyze and trade the FTSE. Personally, and I you know as this is a, a personal view, I like to actually use a little bit of both, but primarily technical analysis. And what we've found is that the standard technical analysis tools we've previously discussed work well. So things like support and resistance, candlesticks, price action patterns, moving averages, et cetera. So if you are new to trading and you need to just understand a little bit more about technical analysis, well, I can suggest that you go back and have a look at the Admiral Markets Trading Spotlight webinar archive, where you will find a fantastic plethora of uh, videos on all elements of technical analysis from either by myself or by my colleagues, Marcus and Jens, which will give you additional education and insight into how to use technical analysis in your own trading. But the important thing is, is that these standard technical analysis tools, they will work well on the FTSE. And that's what we're gonna have a little look at later on when we switch across to the actual main charts. So when we have to look at, well, you know, how do we trade the FTSE on the MT4 platform? Well, uh, there you go. You can see it there. There's a little snapshot there that, you know, the FTSE 100 is, is an instrument on the MT4, not unsurprisingly called the FTSE 100, and it's listed along with the other indices, and it trades as what's known as an electronic continuous contract. What does that mean? Well, that just means that we see, you know, it's a, a continuous price that you see that is offered to you in terms of the bid offer spread, as opposed to trading as a futures contract, which might be you know, a futures contract written in sort of March, June, September, December contracts that may reflect that particular futures contract. What is offered here on MT4 is an electronic continuous contract. So whatever price you see there offered to you, you know, is the price that you will be trading. And that's the price that you need to be aware of and price that you actually need to be able to, to study and manage in terms of how you uh, identify your trades, manage the risk on your trades, manage the targets and your stop losses on your trades. But we'll show you how we can find that on the MT4 platform, because as I said, I appreciate we do have a very wide range of people who join us here today for our sessions.
So when it comes to looking at how to trade the FTSE on MT4, what we need to do is have a bit of a standard routine to help build our picture. It would be interesting to know of those people here who are joining us today, uh, how many of you have actually traded the FTSE? How many of you have actually actively trading the FTSE at the, uh, at the moment? And if so, is it part of a basket? You know, do you just specifically trade the FTSE alone or do you trade it as a bit of a basket of either other instruments or as a basket of indices? I'll show you how my profiles are set up on MT4 in a, uh, in a short while. But regardless of that, it's important to have a standard routine to help you build a picture. Okay, if you're going to trade the FTSE, you want to understand. Okay, you need to build a picture to understand where it is and how it's uh, how it's maneuvering. So, and we've talked about this in many many of the previous trading spotlight webinars, is that you have a little routine, something simple like you can start where draw on your support and resistance levels from your monthly, weekly, and daily charts. Also, identify if there is a trend in place. If there is, well, then you want to be trading in the direction of strong trends. If there is a strong trend in place, don't try and fight it. And for your entries, you're able to use candlesticks and price action patterns to give you a, uh, uh, an edge in terms of identifying some triggers to be able to sort of help you decide to take a position in the FTSE. I will explain that in a bit more depth when we look at the charts in a, uh, in a moment. So Bo says intermediate, been trading four years, have traded the FTSE, but not uh, not regularly. OK, that's great. Thanks for that, Bo. Apoorva says if there is any bank holiday in the UK, traders of FTSE 100 should pay attention on an economic calendar. And you are absolutely right there, Apoorva. You know that the, you know, the, the market reflects the UK. So if there is a bank holiday in the UK, well, then the FTSE 100 will be closed. In fact, all of the FTSEs will be closed. So here we are, you know, today we're in June. Uh, I think the next UK bank holiday is the end of August. So that will, you know, you need to be a, aware of that if you were focusing on uh, trading the uh, the FTSE. Philip says that, you know, he only really has traded Forex. Well, okay, that's great. This, what will hopefully in this session will give you Philips as an idea to see how some of the ideas and thoughts and concepts that you might utilize in trading Forex are also equally applicable to trading both the FTSE and other indices. So hopefully therefore, you know, widening the kind of basket of what you may be able to focus on if that actually works for you and suits you with your own trading personality. So what we do find with the, uh, the FTSE here is that uh, is the FTSE does respect major levels. Now, how do we define major levels? We're talking here about big round numbers, big psychological levels. These big psychological levels, you know, they become self-fulfilling prophecies. So I've just drawn here on a chart here, and I'll just use our uh, fabulous drawing tool, is that what you can hopefully see, he says, is that I've just drawn here on the charts, 8,000, 7,000, 6,000, 5,000, 4,000, okay? Uh, and hopefully maybe you can see is that actually sort of price has reactions at these levels, okay? Because the way people trade these, okay? The way people trade indices is that, you know, not everybody is an active trader. Some might be quite passive traders, almost sort of kind of long-term investors. Uh, and what they're actually looking for is invariably they are interested when, you know, when price gets to a particular level, that's what they're uh, kind of interested in. They'll just, you know, they'll have put their trades on thinking, oh, well, if, you know, the FTSE breaks above 5,000, I'll, you know, I'll place a trade. And, or if I'm in a trade, I'll have a target at 6,000, or I might have a stop loss at 5,000. And for the last, uh, you know, for the last, for, for a good part of this, uh, the last 18 months, we've had sort of 7,000 was a, uh, acting as a bit of a support level for the FTSE. As you can see, this is a, uh, the monthly chart on the FTSE 100 uh, until we had the, uh, the complete breakthrough there okay, earlier this year as part, of the, uh, as part of the kind of COVID financial crash. But even there, it sort of went down to 5,000, okay, but it couldn't close beneath it. And well, as we'll look at the live charts, we've had a little bit of a, a bounce back from there. So it is worth being aware of drawing on these levels and being aware of these levels, okay? And it doesn't really matter whether you're a monthly trader, a weekly trader, an hourly trader, a five-minute trader of the FTSE, okay? It's important to know where those big levels are because you don't want to be buying into resistance. You don't want to be selling into support, okay? You need to be aware of those so you can 
build a picture, give yourself a little bit of awareness about what is actually going on in that market. Cause that might just help you either a just make better trades or b just make better choices in terms of maybe, maybe just having a little bit of patience, maybe not wanting to uh, sort of buy straight into a resistance level or sell into a support level and actually just wait and see how the price reacts around those levels. Because as you can see, price has reacted around those levels. We've just drawn them on there. You know, that in itself, that in itself can offer up opportunity for the educated and well-prepared trader. So, as I said, it's important to know these levels and it doesn't really matter whether you're a five minute trader or you're a monthly chart trader. Okay. You want to be aware of those big levels because they do have an impact and that's uh, that's key for us to know. And, you know, just as a, a further example of that, you know, here, what we've got in here is this is the FTSE on the one hour chart here. And this is 6,000. Okay. Which is a, you know, it's been quite a, you know, an important number recently, but hopefully here, just even on the hourly chart, you can see that actually, you know, there is continuous price action around that 6,000 level. Okay. You can hopefully see that even there, you know, it just pushes down before it puts away. Uh, and we can see that there is a reaction to it. And uh, as always, I, uh, I apologize for my artwork. I'm a better trader than I am an artist, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. But hopefully you sort of understand and get the, the gist of what we're talking about. And maybe it's just to show you that there is always a reaction around those big numbers. Okay. So not only do we draw in support and resistance levels, but we want to have in our big round numbers so we can understand and see when price is close and because there will be a reaction. And so maybe that might be a place for you to place trades on. Okay. Where it might be a place where you might look to enter as part of your trade plan or alternatively, it might be a place where stop losses are placed. Although I wouldn't necessarily uh, advertise that I would suggest you, you know, you don't want to have your stop losses at, at big round numbers. You want to have them the other side of them or targets though, or particular targets just in front of those big, uh, big round numbers as well, because they become a self-fulfilling prophecy. When you watch, you know, uh, when you watch the, the news in the evening, okay, certainly here in the UK, or when, you know, read in the, the, uh, the papers, they will invariably use it as a reference point. So the, you know, you'll hear the newscaster talk about how the FTSE traded through 6,000 today, because it's a big round number, okay? It's an easy number for, for people and, and non-traders to get their minds around. And so these levels become self-fulfilling prophecies and that we can utilize that to our own benefit as a uh, as a trader so here's some of the points we've learned about trading the FTSE the FTSE 100 is more reflective of global economy these days now what does that actually mean? What we find is that the, the makeup of the FTSE changes, okay, based upon which are the biggest 100 companies. So we recently had a change in the FTSE, and so we saw three or four companies drop out of the FTSE and three or four new companies come in as they're based on their market capitalization. But what we find these days is the FTSE 100 is actually probably more reflective of a global economy rather than the UK economy. And what impact does that uh, have? Well, if the companies on the FTSE, so you could have some of the big oil companies, okay? So BP, Shell, or you might have some of the big pharmaceutical companies like AstraZeneca, et cetera, or uh, GlaxoSmithKline. They are effectively global companies. And so invariably what happens is that a lot of their profits or a lot of their revenues come from overseas. They're not just selling in the UK. They are selling overseas. So that has a knock on impact because, as the second point says, when there are particularly strong moves in the British sterling, the great British pound, that can have an impact on FTSE moves. So if you think about it, when the, uh, the British pound sterling is weak, that actually has uh, an impact on the profits that these companies make overseas. Equally, when the sterling is strong, okay, when sterling is strong, that will have an impact upon those companies on the FTSE 100's profits. So invariably, that has an impact on the FTSE itself. So you need to not only just be aware of the FTSE, but also just have an impact and an understanding of where the sterling is. Is that sterling strong at the moment? Is it kind of neutral or is it weak? And we can have a little look at that on the charts in a, uh, in a moment or two's time. 
What I find for uh, uh, many intraday traders is that many intraday traders, they will trade the DAX and the FTSE during the early morning European session, and then they'll focus on the US indices in the afternoon. Why is that? It's because actually what we're finding increasingly is not only is the FTSE 100 reflective of a global economy, but also because with the advent of uh, uh, the algos, what we're finding is a lot of the indices are now have very strong correlations with together uh, and in particular against the American indices. So in the afternoons, what we find is that the DAX and the FTSE will very often just track what is going on in the US indices, regardless of what may, might be happening, regardless of what will be happening to particular UK stocks that afternoon. So that's important for you to know. As I said, many intraday traders will look at focusing on DAX and FTSE in the morning, okay, in the morning for here in the UK or European time zone, uh, and then they will focus on trading the US indices in the afternoon. As we mentioned before, it's important to recognize that the first 15 to 30 minutes, okay, of opening of the FTSE and, well, to be honest, any uh, indice can be quite volatile, especially if there has been significant news overnight. So when we look at the charts, we see the continuous contract. So we will actually see some of the trading that goes on overnight. However, if you're trading directly with the exchange, if you're, you know, a big company looking to buy or sell some of their own shares because they have uh, uh, in, involving a, a buyback, et cetera, or if you're a big institution looking to actually buy, you know, a large chunk of uh, shares, you having to go through the stock exchange and remember what we said, Stock Exchange, okay, London Stock Exchange opens between 8 and 4.30. That's where the bulk of the trading will occur. And as I said, the majority of it will occasionally occur in the early morning European session. And so if there's been an overnight event, there might be orders placed waiting to sort of uh, hit the market at 8 o'clock. Sometimes that can make the market quite volatile. So my suggestion to you, especially the new traders, is if you are looking to trade the FTSE, don't necessarily look to focus on trading the first sort of uh, 10 to 30 minutes of that FTSE, uh, FTSE sort of opening in the morning, because sometimes it can be quite volatile. And what you'll find is that the market will whipsaw back and forth quite, uh, quite a great deal. And finally, what you'll also see is that some people like to trade opening gaps when they happen. What, what does that actually mean? Well, I'll try and show you a couple of gaps on the charts when we switch across in a, in a moment. But very often what you'll find is that you know, a gap occurs when there is a difference between the closing price from the previous day and the opening price for this day or the next day. And where there is a gap between the, what price the, the market closed and what price is open, that's often known as an opening gap. When that is large enough, that in itself creates a trading opportunity. Because what it is is that it creates a vacuum. And as we know from nature, nature abhors a vacuum. So wherever nature finds a vacuum, it will look to move to fill it. And the same is in financial markets. When you get a gap, an opening gap in the morning, invariably the market will look to fill that gap. Maybe very early in that session, might be days away, could be weeks, sometimes could even be months, years away. But opening gaps or gaps in the market in general, okay, which I'll show you a few of, they will always look to fill. And that in itself offers up a trading opportunity depending upon your own particular trading style and your own particular trading personality. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, the Financial Times Stock Exchange 100 Index is a share index of the 100 biggest companies listed on the London Stock Exchange by their market capitalization. You'll hear most of the traders just simply call it FTSE. Okay, and when they're talking about the FTSE, they are generally referring to the FTSE 100. But remember, the FTSE also has a FTSE 250, FTSE small caps, FTSE 350, and a FTSE all share, which encapsulates all of those. It trades between 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. London time. And although we have the continuous contract, which we can see the trading through it, that is when the bulk of the trading on the FTSE occurs. As we had a look at on a few of the uh, previous slides, the FTSE responds well to big round numbers. They become self-fulfilling prophecies. So make sure they're marked on your chart. Make sure you see how price is reacting to them. You don't want to get caught in the volatility around there, but there might be the opportunity for you to have a trade pattern 
around trading those big round numbers, or they may work as particular targets for your trades. The FTSE tends to respond well to technical analysis and that we can utilize things like support and resistance, candlesticks, price action patterns. And those are things that, you know, as I say, there are lots and lots of videos now in the trading spotlight webinar archive that will help actually just in the, educate you and provide you insight into how to utilize those. And that those are good skills to have regardless of what you particularly look to trade on. So with that in mind, why don't we switch across to the charts in a moment or two and have a look at the FTSE and see how it's been uh, working in the, uh, in, the, in the recent tumultuous times and what, if any, opportunities it provides for us uh, as we have a look at uh, analyzing and looking to trade the FTSE itself. Uh, and as always, we know here at Admiral Markets that traders, you know, it, trading can be quite a lonesome endeavor and it actually helps to have a community around you that can help you. So if you want to get support after this webinar, when you most need it, then come and join the Trading Spotlight community. OK, you can see trading updates from uh, myself, but also from my colleagues, Marcus and Jens, who post some fantastic material uh, on there. And you can join the community on tradersyard.com. And you can see there that there's the link for us to join tradersyard.com forward slash group forward slash 312. And also don't forget to join us next time. So you can join us on Wednesday where my colleague Marcus will talk about learning about matching your trading strategy to your risk appetite, including an overview of the different levels of risk tolerance in trading, how different levels of risk appetite align with different trading styles. So like scalping, day trading, swing trading, how different levels of risk appetite align with different risk and money management styles and how to use your personal risk tolerances to choose the best trading strategy for you. That'll be on on Wednesday, 10th of June, 2 p.m. London time. Check your inbox for the webinar link or head over to the Admiral Markets website where you can sign up to the Trading Spotlight webinar series. And as always, there is lots of analysis and education and further resources on the AdmiralMarkets.com website. And if you want to contact us, well, you can actually contact us here at global at admiralmarkets.com or you can uh, look out and check all of the uh, previous Trading Spotlight webinars on the youtube.com forward slash Admiral Markets or on facebook.com forward slash Admiral Markets Global. So I hope you found that useful. If you'll bear with me for a moment, what we're going to do, as I said, we'll switch across to the Admiral Markets MT4 platform and let's have a look at the FTSE. Let's have a look at what it's actually doing and we can have a look at how it actually operates, not only on its own, but within a wider context of the uh, other global indices it operates. So if you just bear with me for a moment, we'll switch across and have a look there. So I'm hoping once again, ladies and gentlemen, that you can uh, hear my voice and see me. You can see the see the charts there that we have up here. So um, what I have here, this is a uh, this is overall. This is just a, I have a uh, um, a British pound profile, okay, GBP profile. That's what uh, that's what we're looking at here, uh, and so it holds not only the FTSE but also the sterling pair. So just just to give you the context, I have here. Uh, this is the pound against the US dollar. Um, the euro against the sterling, the pound against the uh, the Aussie, pound against the Canadian dollar, and then down along the bottom left, the pound against the Japanese yen, pound against the Swiss franc, pound against the New Zealand uh, dollar, and then here we have uh, on the FTSE at the bottom right. And so all in all, very quickly, I can utilize that to try and basically grab a uh, an understanding and insight into what's going on in the UK at the uh, at the moment. And that helps me be able to sort of build my uh, positions accordingly. But we're here to talk about the uh, FTSE in particular. So let's bring up the, uh, the FTSE chart here. I'm just going to start. And here we are. So um, if you're new to trading, you can find it under your market watch, okay, which is also your button up here on your, uh, on your ribbon, okay? 
at FTSE 100. Okay, you can see there, you know, the buy and the ask price there, the bid and the ask price there. Okay, you know, one of the good things about trading uh, indices, especially FTSE indices, etc., is that the spreads are very, very tight, which makes them very competitive. Uh, and you know, we've just got a chart here. And remember what I was saying is that invariably. When you start out, we want to understand levels of support resistance. And so I have a, this is a monthly chart here, and I'm just going to draw in particular levels. So I'm going to change the colors that I have for my, uh, for my levels of support resistance as opposed to my kind of big round numbers. Just to bear with me, what we'll do is we'll have them blue. So they're kind of completely different. We'll have them just here we go, maybe a bit like that. So. Uh, and so I'm just drawing in particular levels. I want to see particular highs and lows. I just want to be aware of them. If I start to see you know, particular levels sort of coming out, the place where there's a sort of quite uh, quite a great deal of touches, that's what I'm interested in. If there's been particular sort of pushes down to lows, then there are lows or highs here. Okay, I'm kind of curious about it. I just want to be uh, aware of it because I know that when price gets there at the time, there's a good chance that there will be some sort of re. Uh, reaction there and I you know I want to be uh, I want to be aware of that I don't particularly want to trade just right into uh, into that it uh, itself and so you know for this I find fractals okay which we covered I think last week or a couple of weeks ago they find very helpful when I see them so we start with the monthly chart okay and uh, you know down to the weekly where I can start to sort of tighten up those particular levels identify if there are any more particular levels that are of interest I'm, I'm quite comfortable with that at the moment and then also have a look at the the daily just have an understanding of any particular recent sort of highs and lows that are of interest there were uh, just draw that one in there okay i'm kind of curious about here hopefully you can uh, see that i might be just tighten up one or two of the uh, particular levels when i see them as well so just looking here where there's been a few couple of touches there okay there's clearly a little bit of a reaction there or just uh, around those particular um, levels the uh, let's just tighten that up onto the recent low there uh, and you know we can actually sort of draw in some particular um, draw in some you know particular patterns as well remember we talked about patterns that we uh, we might see okay there's there's a whole uh, webinar series just on uh, looking at continuation patterns and reversal patterns so what I want to do is, you know, I, you know, I've already drawn, as you can see, I've drawn on the big level, uh, the big round numbers here. This is back up to the monthly chart, and you know, as we showed on the on the slide, you can see where prices there is reactions from that. The you know, price does react to that, okay, and because even even though increasingly there are indices involved, or rather increasingly there are algos involved in trading indices, um, you know, those numbers are still remembered because those numbers are, you know, humans remember those numbers. So, you know, humans remember those dates, okay? And that's what makes them that kind of self-fulfilling self prophecy that, um, that we see in markets. So if we go down into the, uh, the weekly chart, well, here's what we're going to look at, okay? I'm just going to zoom out a little bit here. So... So pr primarily, you know, what we've been seeing for the FTSE because of, uh, you know, in fact, let's just take a little step back here. What we had here in 2015, 2016 was the kind of run up to the Brexit uh, vote. Uh, and that had, and let's use the tool, what we had here was that uh, invariably, you know, as as price started to, uh, as price started to, uh, um, as price started to sort of kind of maneuver around that, here we had the, the actual, Brexit vote here. I think it was sort of June 2016. But actually what it, we already could see and we could see is that the price that actually was creating what's known as an inverse head and shoulders. Okay, an inverse head and shoulders. So what happened as part of Brexit was that, you know, when Brexit occurred, the uh, the sterling, okay, against all currencies, and in particular, like the, let's say, the sterling against the US dollar, you know, we immediately sort of went, you know, from being around about 150, trading down to 120. So remember what we said a few slides ago was that, you know, the FTSE is also quite well correlated with sterling. So as effectively as the sterling weakened, that meant that global companies on the FTSE 100 who were taking in revenues in other currencies, so US dollar, Japanese yen, euro, Swiss franc, that was making their profits look better. So actually, even though the uh, Brexit was seen uh, as a, uh, as you know, as a, a kind of a, a, a you know, as a kind of major decision, it, it was actually, it looked good for uh, the FTSE. And actually you can see there for a good while there, the FTSE sort of rose, okay, for about 18 months afterwards. And then as we got into sort of discussions about FTSE, well, actually what we can see is that the kind of price bounced around has been mostly in a range between around about sort of 7,000, okay, 
and 7,700, 7,800 there. And hopefully you can see that. Uh, and actually what, what occurred was, and let's just get rid of some of these two drawing tools. What we saw was that you know, we were in that range and then invariably what we've had is, you know, we saw here when the kind of COVID crisis started to really kick in around uh, end of February, price we can see basically price on that weekly chart really traded down through that 7,000 level. Okay, and then what we saw here, let's just uh, let's just zoom in a little bit, shall we? Let's zoom in. What we actually saw here was that we had, you know, I talked about gaps. Now this wasn't an early morning gap. This was just price moving so uh, so rapidly that invariably it just kind of gapped down. I suspect that might, for off the top of my head, that's probably the uh, over uh, over a weekend. Okay, when uh, when things were deemed to be uh, really not uh, not terribly not terribly good there. Okay, so um, you know we could see that move there, and, and price went down to uh, sort of the five thousand region recently. But it, here's the interesting thing: on a on a weekly basis, it, it didn't actually close beneath five thousand, and actually, pretty much the uh, the next week we had a bullish engulfing candle, and since that time, price has been drifting north. And we'll look at actually how that occurs, okay, compared to the global indices. So, what might be interesting to see? Let's just switch between our tools here. Is that you know, some people, a lot of it would depend upon your particular uh, um, timeline, your time scale. But if I go into a daily chart, or rather, let's just stay in the week chart. Some people would say that actually the FTSE is still in a downtrend and that this is actually just a pullback in a downtrend because price has been making lower lows and actually price is beneath the 50 and the 200 and beneath the 7,000. Shorter term traders might look at that and say, well, Paul, actually, since the uh, low back at the end of March, we were on a daily basis. You know, for the last couple of months, we have been in actually quite a nice uptrend. And hopefully you can see there. And if I just use my drawing tools there, you know, you can hopefully see that, you know, we're getting higher lows, okay? Higher lows and higher highs. And that's of uh, relevant importance to us. So, you know, on a shorter term time frame, people would be saying, well, actually, you know, that's actually been quite bullish since, the, since these lows, the FTSE has actually sort of just been moving moving just grinding its way grinding its way up and if i just uh, sort of draw i'm trying to draw on this as i said uh, excuse my uh, excuse my kind of artistry at uh, i mean as i said i'm uh, better at trading than artistry some people might say that that is actually carrying on as a bit of a rising wedge and so with that if you're trading on a shorter time frame you'd actually be quite bullish and you'd be looking at saying well paul you know, we've actually, we've traded through this particular gap here, remember? I remember what I said is that nature abhors a vacuum. There was a gap there. And what we've actually seen just recently is actually price has come back and actually filled that gap. Price has traded up through that gap there, okay? Nature abhors a vacuum, okay? And when we see that, it always wants to sort of uh, uh, come back and trade through and actually get that gap. Now, I appreciate that some of the people here today will be longer term traders, maybe on monthly, weekly, daily charts. Some of you may be much shorter term traders. So, you know, how would you look to, uh, to, to operate? Personally, you know, I find, you know, what I like to use is, and I said this is a personal note, is that I quite like to use the four hour chart as a, as a kind of a, it's a kind of a go between, okay? You can still trade the four hour chart, even if you're trading big swing positions on monthly, weekly, daily charts. But if you're a shorter term trader, the four hour can give you a good indication of where the bias is, where the order flow is. And hopefully you can see there, okay, that, you know, in the four hour chart for the FTSE, over the last few weeks, last couple of months, the, the FTSE has been grinding its way higher, hasn't it? And, you know, what I tell new traders is that, you know, you want to identify if there is a trend. And, you know, good trends leap off the charts at you, okay? If you, if you have to force it, if you have to push it, you have to, you know, close one eye and squint to see if it's a, uh, if it's a trend in place, well, uh, I'll tell you, uh, I'll give you a little hint. The likelihood is that there is no trend there, okay? So hopefully you can see that there, you know, we're getting higher highs, higher lows. We're also seeing price is above the 50 period moving average, which is my red moving average there. And you know, what, what's interesting to me is that every last couple of times it's come back to the 50 period moving average, it's actually bounced off it quite nicely. So there you could be looking at things like three bar reversal patterns, okay? If you're not sure what they are, go back into the Trading Spotlight webinar archive and you'll find that there are lots of examples of uh, how to trade them. 
And what we see is, you know, as we're pushing to new highs, we're getting sort of, we'll be getting supply and demand areas, which we've covered as well to understand, you know, and I'll be looking at sort of trying to work out, well, you know, where are the next supply and demand areas when we're starting to, to move in this particular area. But the important thing is, is that this is in a particular uptrend. So what I say is when you're in an uptrend for new traders, don't fight it, okay? Don't try and fight new uh, trends. What we want to see is actually want to find opportunities to be able to trade with the trend. And if we go down to the one hour chart, well then, you know, we can see that, you know, the kind of one hour chart for the last couple of weeks, once again, price having bounced off that 200 period moving average, then getting above the 50 period moving average, price has been in a particularly nice trend. And there have been times where price has bounced off the 20 period moving average quite nicely on its journey. Once again, the one hour 50 period moving average has also acted as fine support there before we actually sort of ran and moved our way up strongly. And now I look at, okay, now I look at, we are quite overextended, okay, from the uh, 50 period moving average. I'd be looking at there is, is that a little bit of a, uh, a double top forming there? Okay. Is it a case of that, you know, price just wants to take a, a little bit of a breather? Okay. After, after a really strong run up, is it a chance that price wants to take a breather and maybe just sort of have a little bit of profit taking from the people who've been long all here from the, uh, from the lows? And would price could price drift back down towards that 50 period moving average? That's what I'd be looking at at the moment. So for you know new traders who want to trade with the trend, you'd be looking to see well if price does that when price pulls back to the areas which might be an area of where the uh, previous um, previous lows were, or where there might be sort of uh, areas of uh, demand, okay, or where you're running into. Uh, dynamic resistance like the moving average that would be an opportunity for you to basically to have a little look at a uh, an opportunity for a trade so uh, just want to finish off as well I think I might have it here, here on this particular one is that maybe we can have a look at um, how it just looks across all of the indices at the moment so just want to see have I got uh, do, 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 maybe I have it on set on here is let's have a look so here we go. So here's a profile I've got set up of the uh, indices. So what I have here, the top left, Dow Jones on the weekly, S&P 500 on the weekly, NASDAQ on the weekly, DAX 30 on the weekly, uh, the Nikkei, Japanese on the weekly, ASX, the Australian on the weekly, and bottom right, FTSE on the weekly. And here is Hong Kong, but that might be a little bit, uh, a little bit different there. But what I just want you to look at and stretch is, that's the weekly chart, but hopefully you can see that all of those indices are pretty much following each other, okay? And what that actually means is that they're following the US indices. They're very strongly correlated, and that is worth noting. When they're all strongly correlated like that, you, you certainly don't want to be fighting that. You want to be finding ways to trade with that trend. And for the last few weeks, okay, regardless of the turmoil that might be going on in the economy, the stock market, okay, the equity indices have been pushing higher and you wouldn't want to fight that. So, so you know, if the FTSE is going higher and all of the other global indices are, you know, rallying higher, well, then that's the way you want to trend. Don't look to fight a big trend like that. Equally, when you find on the rare occasion when all of the indices are, there, those correlations are broken and they're actually all doing their own different thing, well, that can be a time to actually just just to, just to take a step back, that can be a time to just let the market settle itself and work itself out and work out its next direction. As I said, you're trying to, it's almost like trying to surf the biggest waves. That's what you're looking to do. You're, you know, as a trader, you're a surfer. Don't try to fight the market. Just look to find where the, uh, the, the trends are and look to try and surf with those, uh, with those waves. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you found that uh, useful. I hope you found that give you a little bit of insight into uh, not only the FTSE, but how it fits into a bit of a global picture. Uh, and also to look at how you can actually identify whether you're, you know, depending upon whether you're a position trader, swing trader, intraday trader, how you could break the FTSE down, okay, identify when and where and if it's in a trend and look to try and trade with that trend. And then also, as I said, see the picture of how it fits in with all the other global indices. I wish you the best of success in your uh, own trading. and I look forward to speaking to you on the next uh, Trading Spotlight webinar series. Many thanks.